This sound file contains the spoken version of the Wikipedia article on Joseph Kittinger. The material was recorded on December 9, 2017. Joseph Kittinger from Wikipedia, the free encyclopedia at en.wikipedia.org. Joseph William Kittinger II is a retired colonel in the United States Air Force and a United States Air Force Command pilot. Following his initial operational assignment in fighter aircraft, he participated in Project Manhai and Project Excelsior in 1960, setting a world record for the highest skydive from a height greater than 31 kilometers. He was also the first man to make a solo crossing of the Atlantic Ocean in a gas balloon. Serving as a fighter pilot during the Vietnam War, he achieved an aerial kill of a North Vietnamese MiG-21 jet fighter and was later shot down himself spending 11 months as a prisoner of war in a North Vietnamese prison. In 2012, at the age of 84, he participated in the Red Bull Stratos project as capsule communicator, directing Felix Baumgartner on his record-breaking 39-kilometer freefall from Earth's stratosphere, exceeding Kittinger's earlier freefall in 1960. Section 1. Early Life and Military Career Born July 27, 1928, in Tampa, Florida, and raised in Orlando, Florida, Kittinger was educated at the Bolas School in Jacksonville, Florida, and the University of Florida. He became fascinated with planes at a very young age, and soloed in a Piper Cub by the time he was 17. After racing speedboats as a teenager, he entered the United States Air Force as an aviation cadet in March 1949. On completion of aviation cadet training in March 1950, he received his pilot wings and a commission as a second lieutenant. He was subsequently assigned to the 86th Fighter Bomber Wing at Ramstein Air Base in West Germany, flying the F-84 Thunderjet and F-86 Sabre. In 1954, Kittinger was transferred to the Air Force Missile Development Center at Holloman Air Force Base, New Mexico. It was during this assignment that he flew the observation-slash-chase plane that monitored flight surgeon Colonel John Stapp's rocket sled run of 632 miles per hour in 1955. Kittinger was impressed by Stapp's dedication and leadership as a pioneer in aerospace medicine. Stapp, in turn, was impressed with Kittinger's skillful jet piloting, later recommending him for space-related aviation research work. Stapp was to foster the high-altitude balloon test that would later lead to Kittinger's record-setting leap from over 102,800 feet. In 1957, as part of Project Manhai, Kittinger set an interim balloon altitude record of 96,760 feet in Manhai 1, for which he was awarded his first Distinguished Flying Cross. Section 2. Project Excelsior Captain Kittinger was next assigned to the Aerospace Medical Research Laboratories at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio. For Project Excelsior, meaning Ever Upward, a name given to the project by Colonel Stapp as part of research into high-altitude bailouts, he made a series of three extreme-altitude parachute jumps from an open gondola carried aloft by large helium balloons. These jumps were made in a, quote, rocking chair, unquote, position, descending on his back rather than in the usual face-down position familiar to skydivers. This was because he was wearing a 60-pound kit on his behind, and his pressure suit naturally formed a sitting shape when it was inflated a shape appropriate for sitting in an airplane cockpit. Excelsior 1. Kinninger's first high-altitude jump from about 76,400 feet on November 16, 1959, was a near disaster when an equipment malfunction caused him to lose consciousness. The automatic parachute opener in his equipment saved his life. He went into a flat spin at a rotational velocity of about 120 revolutions per minute. The g-forces at his extremities having been calculated to be over 22 times the force of gravity, setting another record. Excelsior 2. On December 11, 1959, Kittinger jumped again from about 74,700 feet. For this leap, he was awarded the A. Leo Stevens Parachute Medal. Excelsior 3. On August 16, 1960, Kittinger made the final high-altitude jump at 102,800 feet, towing a small drogue parachute for initial stabilization. He fell for 4 minutes and 36 seconds, reaching a maximum speed of 614 miles per hour before opening his parachute at 18,000 feet. Incurring yet another equipment malfunction, the pressurization for his right glove malfunctioned during the ascent and his right hand swelled to twice its normal size. 
but he rode the balloon up to 102,800 feet before stepping off. Of the jumps from Excelsior, Kittinger said, quote, There's no way you can visualize the speed. There's nothing you can see to see how fast you're going. You have no depth perception. If you're in a car driving down the road and you close your eyes, you have no idea what your speed is. It's the same thing if you're free-falling from space. There are no signposts. You know you're going very fast, but you don't feel it. You don't have a 614 mile per hour wind blowing on you. I can only hear myself breathing on the helmet." Unquote. Kittinger set historical numbers for highest balloon ascent, highest parachute jump, longest duration drogue fall, and fastest speed by a human being through the atmosphere. These were the U.S. Air Force records, but were not submitted for aerospace records to the Federación Aeronautique Internacional. Kittinger's record for the highest ascent was broken in 1961 by Malcolm Ross and Victor Prather. His records for highest parachute jump and fastest velocity stood for 52 years until they were broken in 2012 by Felix Bumgartner. For this series of jumps, Kittinger was profiled in both Life Magazine and the National Geographic Magazine, decorated with a second Distinguished Flying Cross and awarded the Harmon Trophy by President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Section 3, Project Stargazer. Back at Holloman Air Force Base, Kittinger took part in Project Stargazer on December 13th to the 14th, 1960. He and the astronomer William C. White took an open gondola helium balloon packed with scientific equipment to an altitude of about 82,200 feet where they spent over 18 hours performing astronomical observations. Section 4, Later U.S. Air Force Career. In 1965, after returning to the Operational Air Force, Kittinger was approached by civilian amateur parachutist Nick Piontanita for assistance on Piontanita's strato jump project, an effort to break the previous freefall records of both Kittinger and Soviet Air Force officer Yevgeny Andreev. Kittinger refused to participate in the effort, believing Piontanita's approach to the project was too reckless. Piontanita was subsequently killed in 1966 during his strato jump 3 attempt. Kittinger later served three combat tours of duty during the Vietnam War, flying a total of 483 combat missions. During his first two tours, he flew as an aircraft commander in Douglas A-26 Invaders and modified on-mark engineering B-26K Counter Invaders as part of operations Farmgate and Big Eagle. Following his first two Vietnam tours, he returned to the United States and soon transitioned to the McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II. During a voluntary third tour of duty to Vietnam in 1971-72, he commanded the 555th Tactical Fighter Squadron, the noted, quote, triple nickel, unquote, squadron. Flying the F-4D Phantom II, during this period he was credited with shooting down a North Vietnamese MiG-21 while flying an F-4D, U.S. Air Force serial number 66-7463, with his weapons systems officer, First Lieutenant Lay Hogdon. Kittinger was shot down on May 11, 1972, just before the end of his third tour of duty, while flying an F-4D U.S. Air Force serial number 66-0230 with his weapons systems officer, First Lieutenant William J. Reich. Lieutenant Colonel Kittinger was leading a flight of Phantoms approximately five miles northwest of Thai Win, North Vietnam, when they were engaged by a flight of enemy MiG-21 fighters. Kittinger and his wingman were chasing a MiG-29 when Kittinger's Phantom II was hit by an air-to-air -air missile from another MiG-21 that damaged the Phantom's starboard wing and set the aircraft on fire. Kittinger and Reich ejected a few miles from Tai Win and were soon captured and taken to the city of Hanoi. During the same engagement, Kittinger's wingman, Captain S.E. Nichols, shot down the MiG-21 they had been chasing. Kittinger and Reich spent 11 months as prisoners of war in the Hao Lo prison, the so-called Hanoi Hilton. Kittinger was put through rope torture soon after his arrival at the POW compound, and this made a lasting impression on him. Kittinger was the senior ranking officer among the newer prisoners of war, i.e. those captured after 1969. In Kittinger's autobiography, quote, Come up and get me, unquote, Kittinger emphasized being very serious about maintaining the military structure he considered essential to survival. Kittinger and Reich were returned to American hands on March 28, 1973, and they continued their Air Force careers, with Kittinger having been promoted to full colonel while in captivity. Following his return, Colonel Kittinger attended the Air War College at Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama. Following completion of the Air War College, 
Kittinger became the vice commander of the 48th Tactical Fighter Wing at RAF Lakenheath, United Kingdom, where he again flew the F-4 Phantom II. In 1977, he transferred to Headquarters 12th Air Force at Bergstrom Air Force Base, Texas. Retiring from the Air Force in 1978, Kittinger accumulated 7,679 flight hours in the Air Force, including 948 combat flying hours during three tours during the Vietnam War. In addition, he has flown over 9,100 hours in various civilian aircraft. Section 5. Military Awards and Decorations Kittinger received the following awards and decorations during his U.S. Air Force career. U.S. Air Force Command Pilot Wings Master Parachutist Badge Silver Star with one Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster Legion of Merit with one Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster Distinguished Flying Cross with one Silver Oak Leaf Cluster Bronze Star with Valor Device and two Bronze Oak Leaf Clusters Purple Heart with one Bronze Oak Leaf Cluster Meritorious Service Medal Air Medal with four Silver Oak Leaf Clusters Air Medal with two Bronze Oak Leaf Clusters Air Force Commendation Medal Presidential Unit Citation Air Force Outstanding Unit Award Prisoner of War Medal Army of Occupation Medal National Defense Service Medal with one Bronze Service Star Vietnam Service Medal with one Silver and two Bronze Service Stars Air Force Longevity Service Ribbon with one Silver and one Bronze Oak Leaf Clusters U.S. Air Force Marksmanship Ribbon Republic of Vietnam Gallantry Cross with Palm Republic of Vietnam Campaign Medal Section 6 Later Civilian Career Kittinger retired from the Air Force as a colonel in 1978 and initially went to work for Martin Marietta, now Lockheed Martin, Corporation in Orlando, Florida. He later became Vice President of Flight Operations for Rosie O'Grady's Flying Circus, part of the Rosie O'Grady's slash Church Street Station Entertainment Complex in Orlando prior to the parent company's dissolution. Still interested in ballooning, he set a gas balloon world distance record for the AA-06 size class of 3,221.23 kilometers in 1983. He then completed the first solo balloon crossing of the Atlantic in the 106,000 cubic foot Balloon of Peace from September 14 to September 18, 1984, organized by the Canadian promoter Gaetan Crotou. As an official FAI aerospace record, it is the longest gas balloon distance flight ever recorded in the AA-10 size category. For the second time in his life, he was also the subject of a story in National Geographic magazine. Kinninger also participated in the Gordon Bennett Cup in ballooning in 1989 and 1994. In the early 1990s, Kinninger played a lead role with NASA assisting Charles Nish Bruce to break his highest parachute jump record. The project was suspended in 1994. Joining the Red Bull Stratus project, Kittinger advised Felix Bumgartner on Bumgartner's October 14, 2012 freefall from 128,100 feet. The project collected leading experts in the fields of aeronautics, medicine, and engineering to ensure its success. Kittinger eventually served as CAPCOM, capsule communicator, for Bumgartner's jump, which exceeded the altitude of Kittinger's previous jump during Project Excelsior. As of 2013, Kittinger has been assisting balloonist Jonathan Trapp's attempt to be the first to cross the Atlantic by cluster balloon. Section 7. Legacy In 1997, Kittinger was inducted into the National Aviation Hall of Fame in Dayton, Ohio. On January 23, 2007, the Civil Air Patrol honored Kittinger by renaming the Texas Civil Air Patrol Wing's TX-352 squadron after him. Texas Governor Rick Perry cited Kittinger's work, as did the Texas State Senate, with a special resolution presented during the dedication ceremony, attended by Kittinger and his wife Sherry. The Colonel Joseph W. Kittinger Phantom Senior Squadron of the Civil Air Patrol's Texas Wing is based at the former Bergstrom Air Force Base, the site of Kittinger's last active duty assignment in the Air Force and which is now the Austin Bergstrom International Airport. Kittinger was honored at a 2009 ceremony in Caribou, Maine, the launch point for his 1984 solo transatlantic balloon flight. He also served as the guest of honor at the community's sesquicentennial celebration. On February 20, 2013, Kittinger visited his alma mater, 
the University of Florida and spoke to over 400 students and faculty about his role in the Red Bull Stratus mission. Kittinger, a UF alumnus, told his story of when he took the 102,800 foot jump from a high altitude balloon. This event took place during the UF Engineers Week and it was made possible due to the efforts of the UF American Institute of American Aeronautics and Astronautics, UF Air Force ROTC, and the UF College of Engineering. Kittinger Park In September 1992, Colonel Joe Kittinger Park in Orlando, Florida was completed by the Greater Orlando Aviation Authority for the city of Orlando. Located on the southwest corner of the Orlando Executive Airport at the corner of Crystal Lake Drive and South Street, the park was named in Kittinger's honor, but was temporarily closed and partially demolished circa 2008-2011 in order to create a stormwater runoff retention area to permit a highway expansion project of the State Road 408 East-West Expressway. In March 2011, the park was reopened at its previous location. In spring 2014, the mayor of Orange County, the mayor of Orlando, the GOAA board, and other City of Orlando and GOAA officials approved inclusion in the park of a restored U.S. Air Force F-4 Phantom II aircraft. The National Museum of the U.S. Air Force identified an F-4D previously on display in Corsicana, Texas, Air Force serial number 65-0747 for transfer to Orlando. Said aircraft to be placed on display at the park and painted with the colors and markings of the squadron that Colonel Kittinger commanded during the Vietnam War. During the transfer process, it was subsequently determined that Colonel Kittinger had also flown this particular F-4D Air Force serial number 65-0747 on several occasions when it was assigned to his fighter wing in Thailand during the Vietnam War, and again when it was assigned to his fighter wing in Great Britain after the war. Disassembled in Texas and transported via two semi-trailers over a period of several days, the aircraft arrived in Orlando on July 22, 2014 and underwent a total restoration by a team of volunteers at Orlando Executive Airport. Following restoration, it was subsequently moved to its current location on the airport, remounted on its new pylon, and formally dedicated on December 14, 2014. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 3.0 unported license available at http colon forward slash forward slash creativecommons.org forward slash licenses forward slash by dash sa forward slash 3.0